Hello, this is Ms. Augustine, and today we are going to conduct a specific heat experiment virtually, and by that I mean we're going to use a calorimeter to determine the specific heat of a substance. In this case, it will be a metal. So for starters, we're going to use a calorimeter, and that is an insulated device that's used to measure the absorption or release of heat in a chemical or physical process. And calorimeters may be very simple, such as just a styrofoam cup or a soda can, or they can be very complicated, like a bomb calorimeter. So in solving for specific heat, we're going to use a calorimeter, and again, this is this device that's used to determine the specific heat of a substance by energy transfer. And this is a simple calorimeter. So this would be what we would use in class with styrofoam cups and thermometers, and the bomb calorimeter shown here is really fancy. It's a metal container that has another metal container within it, and you usually put water between the two, and then there's a stirrer for the water, and you have ignition wires. So let's say we were checking the specific heat of a food. We would put the food sample inside the calorimeter, and we would ignite it with these little wires, and then we would see how the temperature of water changed. So we would know initial and final temperature of the substance and initial and final temperature of the water. So in calorimetry, uh, you are conducting an experiment to determine accurately and precisely the heat change for these processes. And it could be a chemical reaction or it could be a physical change like melting or freezing. And the heat released by the system is equal to the heat absorbed by its surroundings. So when we calculate specific heat, remember we use the equation Q equals M times C times delta T, where C is specific heat, M is mass, and Q is the heat usually expressed in joules or calories, and delta T is the change in temperature, and it's always calculated as T2 minus T1, or T final minus T initial. So we have two forms of that equation. There's the C equals Q over M delta T, or the Q equals MC delta T. And you can see that in this one on the top, I'm solving for specific heat and rem remembering that the specific heat of water um, is 4.184 joules per gram degree C. So how can we use calorimetry to calculate the specific heat of a metal? Well, you'll use water as a reference. You'll set up a calorimeter. You'll measure the amount of heat gained by a known sample of water, and you'll use that information gained from the water to calculate what the heat that was lost by the metal actually was. And this is a two-step calculation. And there's my calorimeter. So usually you use a beaker, and then you put your styrofoam cup in it so it is insulated. So you're going to measure the mass of the sample of the metal. And so here is my metal sample. It's nickel, and there is my balance. And then I've poured it in, and I've recorded the mass as 83.2 grams. So then step two, measure out a known quantity of water to add to your calorimeter. So I uh, measured out 100 mils of water. And remember that water has a density of one gram per mil, so that would be 100 grams of water. And then step three, you're going to set up your calorimeter using a beaker and a styrofoam cup. And there they are. And you're going to pour your water into the calorimeter. And there I've poured my 100 mils of water into the calorimeter, and remember that's 100 grams of water. Step five, measure and record the temperature of the water in the calorimeter. And so there's my close-up. The water was 20.4 degrees C. And then set up a hot plate with a water bath. Place your metal sample into the water bath. So there is my water bath and I heated it to boiling, and my water was boiling at 99.9 .9 degrees C. So the, allow the metal to stay in the boiling water for 10 minutes, and that's to ensure that the metal is at the same temperature as the water. And then at that point, you're ready to take your metal out of the calorimeter. So I set it in there for 10 minutes at 99.9. .9. 
So measure the temperature of the boiling water. This is the initial temperature of the, me of the metal and measure the temperature of the water in the calorimeter. So my uh, water in my um, hot water bath was 99.9 .9 degrees and my water in my um, calorimeter cup was uh, 20 point, I think it's 20.4. We'll find out. I'm going to click it. Yeah, 20.4. So then we're going to use tongs to take the metal out of the boiling water and pour it into the styrofoam cup containing the water. So I think I have a series of videos. So there I am about to pour. There I am starting to pour. And this is probably finishing the pour. There we go. So, well, this is going to click one more time, sorry. So now, step nine is to monitor the temperature of the metal and the water mixture. So, here I'm showing you that I've got my calorimeter with my metal in it. And here, again, I'm going to get my final temperature. And my final temperature was 28.9. Can't really see it there, but I swear it was 28.9 degrees C. Sorry about the extra clicking. So now you're going to pour the metal onto a paper towel to dry. And there is my metal on my paper towel. So now we're ready to start some calculations. So first let's look at our metal sample. It had an initial temperature of 99.9. .9. That was the temperature of the boiling water. Its final temperature was the same as the water in the cup, 28.9. That means its delta T was in negative 71.0 and the mass was 83.2 grams. So we're calculating eventually C. And then for our water, T1 was 20.4 in the cup. T2 after the metal added was 28.9. The delta T was 8.5 degrees C. The mass of the water was 100 grams, because remember we started with 100 mils. And the C for water is 4.184 joules per gram degree C. So the heat lost by the nickel is the same as the heat that was gained by the water. Since we have the specific heat of the water, we can calculate the heat gained by the water. And we'll do that first. So, for water, here are my variables. My T1, T2, my delta T, my mass, and my C. And the heat gained by water can be calculated using the expression Q equals M times C times delta T. And so here I have my Q my 100 grams of water, M, my specific heat of water, C, and my delta T. And so I notice that grams cancels out, degrees C cancels out, and so my Q is going to be, when I calculate it, 3,556.4 joules. And since 8.5 degrees C is only two sig figs, I have to round to that place right there, the uh, second significant digit. The number immediately following it is a 5, so it rounds to 3,600 joules. So the heat gained by the water is 3,600 joules. So now we can calculate for the metal. So here are my T1, T2, delta T, the mass, the C is what we're going to calculate, and the Q we obtained from calculating the heat gained by the water, and since the water gained a positive 3,600 joules, that means the metal lost that same amount. So the heat lost by the metal, our Q, is negative 3,600 joules. And so we're going to plug that into our equation for specific heat. C for the nickel is Q over M delta T. And here are my numbers. Notice nothing cancels out, and that's appropriate. Joules per gram degree C. Also notice that the two negative signs are going to cancel out and give us a positive number. Plugging it into the calculator, I got 0 0.609425. And I have to round to two significant digits because my Q value only had two significant digits. And so when I round that up, I get my specific heat for nickel is 0 0.61 joules per gram degree C. So there's only one more step to do here, and that would be to compare that to the accepted value. Let's see how I did. So determine the percent error for specific heat. The experimental value, the accepted value. So my experimental value 
is for the uh, nickel is what we just calculated, 0.61 joules per gram degree C. And my accepted value for nickel, I looked it up, is 0.44. Here's my um, equation for percent error. So I plug in my numbers, my accepted, my experimental, divided by the accepted times 100, and I ended up with 38.6. And considering I did this in my kitchen, I thought that was pretty good. So our percent error for this experiment is 38.6 for um, nickel. So this is Miss Augustine signing off.